but it just too much about what what chiropractic medicine was, how it started. It oh, started by a guy yeah. who was a magnetic healer. Don't discount professions based on their history. If we did, osteopathic medicine and medical doctors would also be taken out of the equation because magnetic healing and other types of quackery were very common in 19th century medicine. There were no licensing laws, no formal education. Dr. J.E. Briggs here is a medical doctor who was a magnetic healer as well. Very common for medical doctors to be doing this as well. One of the very first medical doctors in the country, Benjamin Rush for Rush Medical School. He was the Surgeon General of the Continental Army was well known for bloodletting. He would bleed people out when he thought they were sick. He thought that was the appropriate care for those cases. And he's implicated in the deaths of Benjamin Franklin and potentially George Washington, because again, we didn't have antibiotics, antivirals. There really was no form of medicine around at the time. So it's not uncommon. So Benjamin Rush is the father of American psychiatry, but we don't you know, call all medical doctors quacks because they were bleeding, purging, and using tranquilizer chairs during that time. They were eventually taken as pre-scientific ideas, which they were and gotten rid of. So other magnetic killers are Dr. A.T. Still, D.D. Palmer, and Paul Castor. A.T. Still is the founder of osteopathic medicine, which is all physicians nowadays. So it's very likely that A.T. Still got his ideas and D.D. Palmer took them as well. But at the time, they were only able to use arsenic, castor oil, whiskey, and opium. So uh, mercury as well. So we were, we were trying to find better solutions at the time. And A.T. Still was a very uh, at the very forefront of trying to correct these kind of things, trying to correct these kind of medical issues. Um, and so he created osteopathic medicine. And learned about it in the seance, and then his son murdered him and took over the business. This one's pretty easily disproved. There's no evidence he was ever hit by a son or died from it. And here's a death certificate that says typhoid fever from 1913 in Los Angeles, signed by a medical doctor, quote unquote, real doctor. Um, so talking about the source of it, the other world source of chiropractic, D.D. Palmer talks about, allegedly attributes to somebody named Dr. Jim Atkinson's. Um, but what we know is that this defense came about in 1906 when he was about to go on trial for uh, practicing medicine without a license. This, this was a common thing in the, the early 1900s. There were trying to take people out by getting them to practice medicine without a license. The only defense that they could come up with in 1906 or 7, as you can kind of read these things, is a religious defense. It was never mentioned between 1895, the quote-unquote founding of chiropractic. And again, chiropractic is a profession, not an intervention. Um, and so what they decided, Christ, Muhammad, Jehovah, you know, all these people were used as a defense. And in this country, we have religious defenses. And so they were able to use that as a defense instead of trying to use the UCA. He differed greatly from his son in this defense. Um, and he was kind of jealous of AT still, you know, still making money from osteopathic medicine. Um, so it, it's possible he did believe that some spirit spoke to him, but there's no evidence before 1906 that any of this existed. And by 1911, that's when we really started to get this idea, 1910, where he was talking, quote unquote, to a dead person or, you know, taking on a religious ideology. So it's very clear this was tactically used as a legal defense and very unlikely that he actually believed this, especially since we have writings from... Uh, you know, around 1900, where he was mentioning osteopathic medicine. So he was very aware of osteopathy, which means he most likely took those ideas from A.T. Still, the father of osteopathic medicine. So there's no evidence that Dr. Jim Atkinson ever exists. Nobody could find any record of him. Um, but yeah, it did seem like a pretty smart defense. So in 1907, there was a lot of problems with uh, discrimination against Chinese and Japanese. They asked the chiropractor in Iowa about going to war with Japan, and he said he thinks it might happen, so they immediately pressed charge against him, um, and they put him on trial for practicing medicine without a license. So BJ and the other chiropractors came to his defense, and they came up with these ideas, um, and here's the headline, Jap chiropractor arrested today, um, that they would use this as a legal defense to try to keep him from going to jail for a long period of time. Um, so they argue Morokobo was not practicing medicine because chiropractic was a separate entity, um, and that's where they described subluxation. But here you can clearly see that in 1913, they were, or 19, uh, excuse me, 1910, they were describing that they didn't believe in the concept of subluxation. Um, so they weren't thrilled with the definition, but they went along with it because the fate of the man's life was at stake. So the trial of 1907 would set a rift. And here is a mentioning... Um, of, I think it was 1899, yep, there we go, where he mentions, D.D. Palmer mentions osteopathic medicine, his first hypothesis here. Um, so that's problematic because he never mentioned any spiritual seances or anything at the time, but he clearly mentions osteopathy, which means either was, he was a student of A.T. still or he came across as if So here we can see in D.D. Palmer's writing from 1899, he clearly mentions osteopathy several times. And again, we talked about hydrotherapy, but he's very aware of A.T. Still's idea about pressure on a nerve. Um, so that's his first, th his first theory, much before the 1906 or 1907 legal defense, which was used as a religious defense because we know in America we have religious protections. And he saw the example of the Salvation Army. What's they just they they people always say that it's a part of the national institute of healthcare is that what it is 
The American College of Physicians certainly utilizes manipulation as a frontline therapy for lower back pain. The confusion is chiropractic is not an intervention, it's not a treatment, it's a profession with a scope of practice. In fact, in some states, including New Mexico, they can prescribe medication. Manipulations are performed by many individuals, including osteopaths, doctors of physical therapy, and even medical doctors, even though chiropractors certainly do the most. Now, evidence-based medicine is an approach to medicine that came about in the 90s. We have evidence grades, one, two, and three, um, and we're about to look at a chart that kind of shows us the differences between the two. So it's important, once again, we're talking about most of these efficacy charts have to do with manipulation. So recommendation grades are grade A, there's a robust evidence, B, provisional recommendation, C is a consensus opinion. Evidence is inadequate, but pattern of care is recommended with caution. Again, manipulation. So the highest ranking in a particular treatment would have a 1A, meaning there's robust evidence to recommend a pattern of care and general consensus within the community that the treatment is effective. Now let's see what we can find in a study and see how that works here. So look at that. Migraine headaches have a positive, moderate evidence. Cervicogenic, also positive. Um, cervicogenic dizziness has a positive evidence and they're moderate. So these are pretty well documented here. And looking at the periphery shoulder pain, we have a positive uh, adhesive capsulitis positive, tennis elbow positive, hip osteoarthritis positive, patellofemoral syndrome positive, plantar fasciitis positive, uh, acute lower back pain positive, chronic lower back pain we have positive and also high level. We have chronic with a positive as well. And we look through, we see uh, a lot of neck pain has positive as well. Um, so there's a lot of evidence that supports manipulation for all of these types of injuries. So it's not like this isn't evidence-based medicine. In fact, it's exactly that. There's a lot of literature. So American College of Physicians says that manipulation is a frontline therapy and the evidence-based clinical practice guidelines. Again, this is the preeminent uh, organization in America, the American College of Physicians, um, they recommend superficial heat, massage therapy, spinal manipulation, and acupuncture as frontline therapies, and they recommend medication and surgery be secondary or tertiary guidelines. So changes of pain patterns um, alongside medication, spinal manipulation benefits 63% of sufferers with lower back pain. That's pretty efficacious and evidence-based. So we can see here, um, here's a little chart that shows every single NFL team has a chiropractor on staff. Um, they also have two orthopedists, physical therapists. Here's Blake Griffin getting adjusted on the sidelines. So manipulation or adjustment, those are kind of interchangeable in that sense, but they don't necessarily have to do with chiropractic. Chiropractors just tend to do more of them, as we see here with the bears. Um, but it's important to differentiate the two because the profession is something that has a scope of practice and it's regulated by the government. In fact, all 50 states regulate the practice of chiropractic medicine in the United States. They're licensed, trained professionals in all 50 states. Here's the Detroit Lions chiropractor working with that team as well. So it, this isn't a fringe profession by any means. Um, we see here's another study from the Daily Mail. Chiropractors really do relieve back pain, spinal manipulation, eases discomfort, and more than 60% of sufferers. So when you look at adverse effects, we have 3% of them are chiropractors, 70-something percent are physicians. That's why our malpractice coverage is incredibly low, less than 3%. Uh, went to Palmer Chiropractic College. Now, the acceptance rate... So this is obviously a lie. Here's the actual data right here. Acceptance rate is about 44% of Palmer. So, you know, we could do better there, but it's certainly not 100%. So she's blatantly lying about the acceptance rate at Palmer College of Chiropractic, something that you could Google and look up. She also said that x-ray imaging was discovered the same year as chiropractic. It's highly doubtful that the magnetic sealers had it. Here's BG, BJ Palmer with one of the first ever x-ray machines in 1910 because they were very... Uh, involved in the creation of it. So here's Bill Moreau. He's the head of the Olympic Committee, actually the sports medicine director. He's a chiropractor, so the Olympic team um, clearly utilized chiropractic physicians. We can take a look at the hours used here in medical school versus chiropractic school. There's actually 400 more hours of education taken in chiropractic care versus medical school. Uh, the World Health Organization has basic guidelines on the safety in chiropractic and recognizes it as a um, healthcare profession that's very useful as far as conservative therapy. Uh, they define healthcare profession consumer diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of disorders of neuromusculoskeleton and the effects of these disorders on general health. Um, yeah. They call themselves like, doctors. Have you seen? I didn't know. Yeah. Until this so as we can see here from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, out, chiropractors are required to have a doctoral professional degree. They They're required school. to license themselves as doctors of chiropractics and are listed as chiropractic for professions in most states. Uh, they're utilized by DOT and their education. It takes about four years to complete after an undergraduate degree. There's 15 chiropractic programs and 18 campuses. Um, doctor chiropractic degree takes four years to complete and requires three years of undergraduate college admission. So minimum seven, typically eight. All states and districts of Columbia require them to be licensed, although specifications change. There's four parts to national board exam is very similar to the U, uh, USMLE steps. And this kind of goes back to the 1976 Chester Wilk case, the antitrust case, where the lawsuit basically proved that the American Medical Association had been trying to eliminate chiropractic for about 40 to 50 years, um, distributing salacious information and trying to convince the public that they were dangerous. And they've done this to many professions over the years, nurses, physical therapists, podiatrists.
So by their logic, the only real doctors apparently are medical doctors or maybe DOs. I'm not sure how they feel about it. Based on their logic, I think DOs would probably be exempt because of A.T. Still's background. But doctors of podiatric medicine don't go to medical school. They go to podiatry school. Uh, doctors of veterinary medicine, they go to veterinary school. They don't go to medical schools. They, they are called doctor, but apparently, according to their logic, they're not real doctors. Some other examples include... Uh, optometrists. Optometrists go to optometry school. They're not medical doctors. They're not doctors of osteopathic medicine. So according to Joe and, and Yvette, they're not real doctors as well. So don't call them doctors, apparently. Um, doctors of dental surgery, DDS. Um, they go to dental school. They don't go to medical school. So if they have a doctor in front of their name, um, apparently they're also not real doctors, apparently. Um, well, the truth is these all have doctoral degrees, and, and as such, they should be referred to as doctor. Audiologists are doctors of audiology. They also don't go to medical school. They go to audiology school. They're all four-year post-bachelor de uh, degrees. Uh, doctors of pharmacy, they're PharmD. It's a four-year program, and in some states, they're clinicians as well. But according to these two, uh, they're also not real doctors, so don't call them doctors, apparently. Uh, oh, hey, PsyD, psychologists, also don't go to medical school. So like Jordan Peterson, for example, he has a doctorate, but you know, as a PsyD, apparently he's not a real doctor if he didn't go to medical school. Um, another example of, of degree inflation, as we see now, is the doctor of nursing practice, which is a nurse who has a doctorate level education, can diagnose and treat all his diseases. Um, again, I'm sure they would argue they're not real doctors. And then we have doctors of physical therapy who have now extended their program to make them first care providers. Um, but according to them, again, we sh even though they have doctorates and have doctor in the title, we can't call them doctors. So it's legally required as chiropractic physicians to address yourself as a doctor of chiropractic, chiropractic physician, um, to have DR or DC someone in your name. As we can see here, the, the Department of Veteran Affairs, the VA has chiropractors, so they do have them in the hospital system, and we do have hospital rotations in school. Um, so the hospitals there clearly think that that's a useful service. Uh, Medicare Part B, of course, also covers chiropractic care. Um, so these large government agencies apparently don't know as much as these two, um, even though they're incorporating these along with the U.S. Olympic team, um, every NFL team, NBA teams, they clearly have some sort of use for chiropractic physicians. Now, I doubt that any of these people are talking about subluxation theory, and that's something that I personally don't agree with. And um, if you run into a provider that wants to cure types of ailments that don't have to do with musculoskeletal care, you probably shouldn't go see them. And the profession does certainly have some room for improvement when it comes to that and self-regulation. Um, but discounting the entire profession based on that, I think, is a very silly um, idea. And it's something that's very dangerous, especially to young providers out there that are trying to make a niche and are doing great things for their patients.